war so. Das ist Place der Buffer. Und es ist Time to Place hier das andere Video. Now tell me just with a review of Ghostbusters Afterlife last year. And boy, do I fucking agree with many of the things he said. So, I decided why not give my thoughts on his review of the movie Ghostbusters Afterlife. So, without further ado, let's dive in. All right, before we get started, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Satisfy. They sent me their rise pads for my PS5 controller. And though this is absolutely definitely not a PS5 flex video, they have rise pads for Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, so whatever you're poison, they got you covered. They're easy to install, too. I would call it an install, but it's more or less an easy snap done. But as easy as that is, it doesn't feel like they're gonna slip off. The left stick's a swivel stick, which is remarkably comfortable and satisfying, but also doesn't compromise any of the accuracy, and comes with an assortment of five that you can mix and match for your comfort. Always appreciate when a company's like, it's okay, you don't have to cut back on gaming, We'll just make you more comfortable. So click the link below, head over to satisfied.com, pick yourself up a pair. They're running a special right now of free shipping. Enter promo code Jeremy5 to take an additional 5% off your order. And thank you once again to Satisfied for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. Holy shit, dude. This really encouraged me to buy the item, so I will. I mean, not really. I'm not gonna buy the items because I'm not much of a gamer. But if I was interested in playing some video games, I would fucking buy the item for sure. My point is, you did a great job advertising this shit. I'm proud of you. And now heat up that crock pot tonight special is that member berry soup. I don't want to get that this is most likely supposed to be a joke. But I really don't get the reference. And I don't find this funny. What the hell are you even referring to here? This movie has a very different tone and you just gotta know that going in. Yeah, too bad it's a terrible tone. And I found myself comparing this movie to Ghostbusters when I first came out of the movie theater. But it's, it's not fair. I was like, oh, well, Ghostbusters had a lot better pacing. Mate, first time. Meaning you watched this movie several times in movie theaters. I found that pretty hard to believe. Just so this review wasn't released much later than the movie itself. Also, I don't see how it's unfair. It's a movie from the same franchise. The comparison makes complete sense to me. I mean, Ghostbusters is, to me, the gold standard of great pacing in a movie. It is to a lot of people. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But for the most part, it doesn't work as much when it's trying to remind you, hey, by the way, Ghostbusters, throw some Ghostbusters references on the screen. Yeah, that is my biggest problem with the movie. It threw too many references from the first Ghostbusters movie to our faces instead of giving us something new. And why the hell did Ghoster return anyway? We saw Clara say that he was fucking killed in the first one. And the reasons as to why he is apparently back were very poor. But hey, at least unlike Albatine's return in Rise of Skywalker, there was at least a reason provided. It's a poor one, but there was a reason provided, unlike in Rise of Skywalker. But yeah, overall, I think Ghost returning in this movie is just as fucking stupid as Palpatine returning. You don't return villains that died unless there is a legit reason as to why they came back from the dead. Neither of those two movies provide that. So right out the gate, gonna give props, McKenna Grace is fantastic in this movie. You empathize with her, she's the nerdy little outcast kid who loves science. She's solving the puzzle, she's kind of a one-person mystery machine. Which, I mean, you had enough to fill the mystery machine, so it didn't need to be that way. I'll get to that in a second. Talk about how some of the other characters didn't have much to do. But she's a fantastic actor who's done a lot of good stuff before. You're going to continue to see her pump out more great work. I heard she's taking a break after Ghostbusters Afterlife, if I remember correctly. Something about healing up um, from back problems for carrying this entire movie on her shoulder. I was personally not a fan of this character. There aren't too many characters in this movie which I like. But hey, if you like her, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. I can't really comment on what you say about Scooby-Doo, says I think Scooby-Doo is meh. So I don't have much to say. As for your last point, well, honestly, even though I didn't like her performance in this specific fucking movie, I would personally love to see her in other movies. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I'm open to that. Actually, that's not fair. There's a couple other characters named. Well, good for you. As for me, not so much. The kid that she befriends in this movie, podcast, played by Logan Kim. His name is Podcast because he does have a podcast. I thought they worked well together. I thought they were a good team, a good duo. Very good for a two-person Goonies going out there and doing the ghost thing. I wasn't a big fan, but if you like them, that's cool. Also, Paul Rudd. Good for him. People Magazine's sexiest man alive. That's right, not Captain America, Ant-Man. Well, I will admit, this character is actually very damn cool. Oh, and also, I thought that you were a heterosexual. I mean, you did make it clear in some of your videos that you find some women sexy. So, does this 
Really be that you're bisexual then? Hmm, interesting, I didn't know that. Finn Wolfhard? I love Finn Wolfhard, but he wasn't given much to do. It was like, oh, we got the Stranger Things kid in this Ghostbusters movie. So put him over there so we can give himself something to do before we need warm bodies to fill up those jumpsuits for the last act. All right. But it have made much of a difference. He was a safety character anyway. In my opinion, at least. Which is why. In thinking about this movie, if this movie was able to just be its own thing, like maybe Jason Reitman makes this movie unrelated to Ghostbusters, about this absentee grandfather who died and left his family his weird creepy house in the middle of nowhere. And then the kids find grandpa's weird creepy ghost tech and they find out this super ghost apocalypse is gonna happen in this town in the middle of nowhere, so they have to stop it. That would actually be a really cool movie. And when this movie looks like it's going to be that, it's actually, it starts excelling. Honestly, now that I think of it, you're right. This movie probably would have been fucking awesome if it had nothing to do with Ghostbusters. But sadly, says Ghostbusters is part of the title, the nostalgia bit is impossible to ignore. And it's comical how many Ghostbusters references are in this movie. Comical is the word I'd use, so they aren't even funny. It kind of reminds me of. You know when you watch a Transformers movie and you're just inundated with product placement? It's kind of like that, only it's Ghostbusters references, which in its own way is product placement. Yeah, as much as it hurts for me to admit it, and sadly it really does, this movie really is at about the same quality as the Transformers sequels. Yeah, and it really hurts for me to say that because I wanted to love this movie as so many people did, but sadly I didn't in the end. And Ghostbusters Afterlife leans so heavily on the IP of Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters movie that came before it, the nostalgia bait was just to the movie's detriment. It wasn't leading you in a way that was like, all right, what's the secret behind the mystery? Why is seismic activity happening? What's happening on the mountain? No, it's like, oh, are we going to see the entire logo of the Ecto- oh. Honestly, Ghostbusters 2 did something that this movie failed to do. It actually tried something different. It brought the story and characters to new places. It wasn't just a rehash of the first one. In fact, it was the opposite. It was almost nothing but new things. Which is what every sequel should do. Honestly, it hurts for me to say that. It really does. Just I know for a fact that more heart and care was put into Ghostbusters Afterlife. But I personally think that the 2016 Ghostbusters movie is better than this. Yeah, it hurts for me to say it, but I really feel that way. I mean, that movie isn't good, it's mediocre. But what it has going on for it, at least my last time McCarthy was fucking awesome in that movie, it had that going for it. It really sucks that I'm admitting that that mediocre movie which goes for 2016 is, in my opinion, is better than this one. Again, it especially did hurt, so I know that. More current heart was put into Ghostbusters Afterlife. But I can't be dishonest about my opinion. Are you getting bored? Here's a bunch of cute little Stay Puff Marshmallow men. Yeah, I'll give you that one. They're cute. I never liked that scene. I always thought that fucking pointless and thought it added nothing of value. My reaction to that awful scene is What the hell is going on? Why is Vince Clortho eating dog food? He's not a dog. Not really. But what is a dog though? There's so many fucking breeds of dogs that it's hard to believe that it's the same fucking animal. But in this case you're right, it's not a dog, it's a supernatural being. And on the other hand, you have very familiar, very cheap member berry stew that we've been spoon fed for the past few years. Oh, how fucking right you are. Rise of Skywalker had the exact same problem as this movie does. Except that movie is Far, far worse. At least Ghostbusters Afterlife didn't butcher a long franchise as much as that movie did. I think Ghostbusters Afterlife did butcher the franchise, especially since Gorser should even be fucking alive. And yeah, that's as bad as bringing Palpatine back to life, but at least there was an explanation in Ghostbusters Afterlife. But this movie didn't butcher the franchise nearly to the same extent that Rise of Skywalker did. And that's not all. Just last year we had fucking Space Jam A New Legacy, which was nothing more than just fucking pandering. I am so sick of this shit. Why can't filmmakers bring franchises to new places anymore? It's very fucking sad. Yes, in the end, I wanted to like this movie. <laughs> I walked out of the movie theater, I'm like, please find a... It's Ghostbusters, dude. I know the feeling, man. I'm under the exact same pain. I wanted so fucking desperately to love this movie since it got so much positive feedback. And I know that a lot of current heart was put into it, but it's cut to the end. It really fucking sucks, but I want to love a movie so damn badly, but I just can't. 
I'm not a big fan of Avengers and Kim either. But it's even worse with Ghostbusters stuff to live because I don't hate Avengers and Kim, I just find it mediocre. But with Ghostbusters Afterlife, yeah, I fucking hate it. And I feel nothing but guilt for my opinion on both these movies as they are both widely beloved. To be honest with you, man, I'd rather be with the crowd than against it. In the end, maybe it's a better time if you're drunk. Yeah, who you gonna call? He man! Deep cuts, baby. I doubt alcohol would help, since it's really that fucking bad. But I must admit, the fact that you followed up if you're drunk, now it's the party with he man was funny as hell. You really made me laugh, dude. All right, so Ghostbusters Afterlife, have you seen it? What did you think of it? One of the worst movies of 2021 for sure. And again, it hurts for me to say this. Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. Better yet, I'll make a whole video talking about how fucking awesome your video is. Oh wait, that's this video right here. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. This is definitely, without a doubt, one of the best videos of 2021. Now some of you might be wondering, why exactly is this specific review so special to me? Well, most reviews that I saw of Ghostbusters Afterlife were pressing the hell out of the movie and treating it like a masterpiece. Which honestly is fine. I'm glad those people enjoyed the movie more than I did. So what makes this review so special is that it's the review that's the most relatable to me. I agree that this movie isn't very good. But honestly, I think I hate the movie more than Jeremy does. But yeah, I definitely agree with a lot of his complaints with the movie. It sucks that I honestly fucking hate the movie, but... There isn't much I can do to change my opinion, unfortunately. Jeremy's review, on the other hand, is... Fucking awesome, or like he likes to say in his own words, fucking awesome tacular. Great job, Jeremy. You impressed me yet again. Well, guys, you reached the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.